Hi, this is Ed, rolling in to give you some tech support on solid gravy computing. Hi viewers. In 2015, I was conned. Intel and a computer store salesman both sold me on the Intel Core M chip's supposed power, but for over two years I have suffered from poor performance from my Lenovo Yoga 3 Pro laptop. Recently, I've been trying to make videos on the laptop, and during this time, the performance limits have been really noticeable. Given this, I decided to seek out a way to improve my laptop's performance. Now I have to tell you, these Intel Core M chips, among some of the other chips in the Intel range, are a pain in the backside. They are locked down like no one's business, so extracting any performance is seemingly impossible. I searched the web high and low, and no one appeared to have any open ideas on how to wring out any performance gains. But viewers, I'm here to show you after weeks of tinkering and experimenting how to unleash some hidden performance. My Lenovo uses the Core M 5Y71 chip. Now the first port of call in this exercise is to download a program called Throttle Stop. This is available from techpowerup.com. I don't recommend downloading this from third party sources as it could result in viruses and adware. On the Tech Power Up site, click on the Downloads link at the top menu bar. On the page that subsequently loads, there is a section called Browse by Category. We're going to click on Tweaking here and load the next page. Now there will be a series of programs that will be listed here. We want to click on the first one, which is Throttle Stop. On this page, you'll have some information about what Throttle Stop does. Essentially, it's an overclocking tool. So it allows you to modify voltages to your CPU, it allows you to modify clock speed, and other things if you have an unlocked CPU. In our case, we don't, but if you have an unlocked CPU, you can do a whole host of different things. Now, we're just going to select to download the program from one of these sources here. Now we're on the Intel site. I've typed in intel.com and it's taken me to the Australian website, which is because I'm in Australia. From the site, we're gonna click on the search button on the right hand top corner and we're gonna type in extreme tuning. Now extreme tuning is another overclocking program that we're going to use in the process of tuning our computer. Now, if you scroll down on the next page that loads, on the left hand side there's a blue button that allows us to download the program. When we click on this, uh, terms and conditions are going to come up. Now, I've read through this, so I'm just going to go skim through and click on the download button again, but you may wish to read this information. I think that's recommended, but I know a lot of people don't. The final program we need to download to tune our Intel M Core is available through passmark.com, and that's Performance Test 9. So when we load up this page, down the bottom here, we've clicked on the link, and this gives some information about Performance Test. As you can see on the right hand side, this green link here downloads the program. So what we're going to do is download this program. Uh, the latest version here is at the top, and that's version 9, and we're going to download that. Once you've downloaded all these programs, you need to install them. I haven't bored you with showing you the installation process because I'm sure most of you know how to do that. The Throttle Stop program comes as a compressed file and it just needs to be unzipped and saved in a directory of your choosing. Now I've launched the Passmark software and next I'm going to go into the directory in which the Throttle Stop program is saved and I'm going to create a shortcut from the EXE and then from that I'm going to launch Throttle Stop.
When launching Throttle Stop for the first time, you are issued with a warning that you may damage your CPU. Please note that using Throttle Stop is dangerous and any outcomes here are at your own risk, so please bear this in mind before proceeding. Throttle Stop and Performance Test are now open at the same time. And what we're going to do is we're going to close every application that we have open, including antivirus and that sort of thing, and then we're going to wait for our CPU temperatures to drop to 50 degrees before we run a CPU benchmark using performance test. So I closed all applications including the video software and I ran a performance test only once the CPU had reached 50 degrees and as you can see this is my score 2855. Now it's important every time you run the test that your CPU temperature is 50 degrees because if your temperature is higher, your benchmark score will be lower. Next, we're going to run a performance test on our GPU. The GPU is combined graphics and CPU with our chip. So what we're going to do again is wait till that CPU temperature hits 50 degrees before we run the test to see what our score is. Having run the 3D benchmark, on our GPU, we've come up with a score of 429. Now that's our base for both the graphics and the CPU performance. Now we're launching the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility. This allows us to set some preliminary settings to allow us to unlock the capabilities of the Throttle Stop program. Now when you first launch this you are going to get some more warnings about the dangers to your cpu again same rules apply you're doing this at your own risk so please be careful and uh, make sure that you know what you're doing before you tinker around sometimes when you first load the extreme tuning utility you'll find that the max turbo boost is set to the maximum setting or it's set at 5.5 or 5 or somewhere around there because the program has automatically done some things. In my case, the setting was at 4.5, which is the standard setting for the CPU. I saved the settings at 6 for Max Turbo Boost, then completely closed out of the Extreme Tuning Utility. Now that we've laid the groundwork, we can use the FIVR section of Throttle Stop to underclock and undervolt our CPU. And what this does is it helps to prevent some of the thermal throttling and thus keeping the CPU at its optimum level for as long as possible. And this will take quite a bit of your time to go through and basically change and run performance tests and change and run performance tests. And we do that in both the CPU core and the GPU section of throttle stop. We run these tests to find out what performance gains, if any, we are achieving, but also to basically stress test the system to find out if our system will crash. And this is important because the less volts you have going to the CPU, you'll reach a point where the CPU doesn't have enough volts to operate properly. But before we run this trial and error process, we need to make some changes to the UEFI, or otherwise known as the BIOS. Now to enter the BIOS in a Yoga 3 Pro laptop, there is a small button located next to the on switch, which can only be pressed with a ballpoint pen or something similar. With the laptop off, press this button and the BIOS will launch. In the BIOS, we're going to arrow over to configuration then go down to the virtual technology and disable that and do the same to thermal framework and then exit while saving the settings. So after lots of tinkering back and forth, these are my settings. Firstly on the front screen, BD Pro Shot is off, C1E is off and Speed Step is off. These are all throttling functions so they should be switched off. In the FIVR section of Throttle Stop, you'll notice that 
what I've done in the turbo rate limits is reduce the first core to 27 from the max 29. Now what I found when running at 29 is the system would thermal throttle a lot quicker and you wouldn't get that much of a performance gain. So by reducing this clock speed, I've actually reduced the amount of thermal throttling. This keeps the action in the sweet spot longer. I've also reduced the voltage offset by 70.3 millivolts to mitigate some of that thermal throttling. On the Intel GPU side, I've reduced that by 18.6 millivolts. Both these settings were the optimal settings so that I had reduced the amount of heat but also kept system stability. Now what you need to do also is make sure that in this screen you've checked VR efficiency mode and checked the option OK save voltages immediately. This prevents you from losing any settings that you have set in this screen when you close the window. Please note that these settings are for my system only and these settings may cause instability in your system so you will need to run your own trial and error to find maximum performance and stability settings. One section that hasn't been mentioned in throttle stop is TPL or turbo power limits and our CPU is very much locked down so there's not much you can really do here and I wouldn't recommend changing any of the PPO power limit information uh, because it could result in blowing up your CPU. I'm not expert enough to give advice in this area and you may have some comments of your own to pass on. But essentially the only thing I use this screen for is the Intel power balance which allows me to balance the CPU and GPU based on my performance needs and these are my settings. So finally I've run a benchmark for my CPU after all this tinkering and I've come up with a number of 3627 which is a significant increase nearly 800 points of an increase on the benchmark and for the benchmark on my graphics uh, there's approximately a 30 point increase at 458 so significant increases in the overall performance of the laptop. Finally we need to get throttle stop to start when we boot up or log into the laptop or Windows 10. So to do that what we need to do is run a task scheduler. So you do that by typing in this search function here, type in task scheduler and select that from the icon. Next we want to create a new task. So just following my instructions here we're going to go on the right hand side and we're going to click on create new task and this will load up a screen that will enable us to create a task and we're going to call that throttle stop and next we're going to type a description of what the task does which is basically launch the application on login we're going to set this to run for Windows 10 and also we're going to set it to have highest privileges so that it runs without coming up with an alert that it's going to run the program when we log in to Windows. Once we've selected these options then we're going to select the Triggers tab and from the Triggers tab we're going to select New and we're going to go up the top and select when to begin the task and what we're going to select from here is at log on and we're going to then save that and proceed to the next tab
Now from this tab, we're going to select new and the action we're going to select is start a program. And then we're going to click on browse and we're going to browse for the program throttle stop. So we just go to the location where we save the program and we open the folder, open that folder as well. Select throttle stop.exe and click on open. And that's it, we click OK, and then we proceed to the next tab. From this tab, we're going to remove the fact that it only runs when it's plugged into AC power, and we're going to save that. And we click on settings, and we're going to remove the limit where it says that it will stop the program if it's been logged in or running for longer than three days. And we're going to click OK to that. And we've successfully created a task that will initiate the loading of throttle stop when we log into Windows 10. So we click OK to save that. And we can exit out of the task scheduler once we've done and completed that function. Now, what we need to do is we need to launch throttle stop at this point and just make sure that throttle stop is set to go to taskbar. So in the bottom left hand corner, there should be a checkbox with taskbar. We should have a tick in there and that will ensure that it loads and is accessible. If that is unchecked, sometimes it will run in the background, but you won't be able to access it to make any changes. Now, one of the advantages is at the top here, you can select game, you can select internet, you can select uh, battery settings, and you can basically change the clock speeds and the voltages uh, to run uh, differently for each of those. Thanks very much, guys, for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have any comments, please feel free to leave some. Give us a like if this has helped you out and feel free to subscribe to our channel. Uh, that's all for now. Bye.